For today's video, we're going to be using a salvage window, two shutters that we painted, and a sign that we made on our live video yesterday, layer it on top of a wreath, and show you how to add some simple fall decor with a little farmhouse flair. In yesterday's live video, Zeb and I stamped this board that had some real stain on it, and then we foam rollered on the word thankful, and we also milk painted our two shutters here with a 50-50 mix of Sweetie Jane and Pantry Door. If you want to catch the full DIY of the sign to this point and these shutters, be sure to click the link below so that way you can catch all of that. Today, we're going to show you how to finish distressing everything, frame out the sign, get it hung, and pull the complete design together. We've got our thankful sign. I pre-distressed the black in the background, but I just want to distress this part where it says thankful here just a little bit. So I've got 220 on a sanding sponge. You'll notice that some of the white powders off and gives it kind of a barn wood look. And that is one of the main reasons I love using the DIY for their white because it does powder off. If you don't want that effect on there, use Fairy Chalk Mother instead of DIY paint because every time I've ever distressed the DIY, you do get a little bit of a powder. One of the things you can also do is seal it before you stencil over the top, but I love this look. I just go with it. Once I distress it like this, I'm just gonna hose it off with my air hose a little bit and then we'll seal it with a clear wax. We're out in the garage because this is more sanding than I wanted to do in the house. You can kind of see right here, we got some crackle and some good little texture from that milk paint, but we didn't do a great job of painting down in the center here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this a good little distress with some 220 on the orbital sander, and then I'm going to frame the sign so it looks a little more finished, hang it, attach it to the wreath, and then we'll get it on the wall. I've got these little strips of cedar fencing cut out and now I'm gonna use them to frame around the edge of the sign. Normally, I would cut them big enough to leave a little bit of a lip so that I could hang that. It would catch on something like a nail or a screw on the wall and hang it, but I'm not going to be attaching this to the wall. It's, it's gonna be floating in front of the glass sitting on top of the wreath, so I'm going to be attaching it a different way. The sign face down here, I'm just going to kind of center the wreath on it. Then I've got some wire. I'm just going to cut a couple of strips of this, just about six or inches or so. Probably don't need that much, but I'm going to do four total. And this is the back side of the wreath. Got a half inch staple in here so that this doesn't blow through. Okay, pull this down over tight. Then I'm going to just cut off the excess so it's not in the way or hanging out anywhere. Make sure that my wreath is mostly centered. I'm going to put two more on here just for good measure. It's going to be hanging over the sink. I don't need it falling down into the sink. If I want to take this wreath off, it'll now come off real easy. All I need to do is snip these off pull those staples out and the sign can be used somewhere else and so can the wreath. Now we gotta attach this to some ribbon. So I went inside and consulted with the wreath wizard and Jamie said to just tie a knot around it and so she tied a knot real quick so that it would hang right in the center like that and then a little bow up here up top and these are gonna drape down in the front and all I've gotta do is attach it instead of stapling a bunch of stuff. Okay, so somehow I've got to figure out how to hide this screw under here and screw this in. Okay, I'm going right through the ribbon. And we'll see if this works to hide it. I vote yes. I think that's mostly hidden. All right, so I've got a five inch French cleat. And what that does, you attach one end here facing down another one on your wall, and they slide in together and they hold a lot of weight. Okay, now to mount the wall end of it. All right, so I'm gonna pull this clock down. 
my cabinets are not equal and the window is not centered on the cabinet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of center this piece on these window frames that are currently up here and see what that looks like. All right, let's see how well I did at lining this up. How's that looking back at home? <laughs> I feel like my measurement is off. The beauty of the French cleat, if I need to adjust it a little left or right, I can slide it on that cleat and it'll be okay. That's as close as it's gonna get. The tails on the ribbon were a little too long. No, no it's all jagged. I'm not, my arms aren't long enough. Just don't pull it down off. Weirdest, craziest sign out angle ever. But we want him to see that. <laughs> it looks good. And we're gonna include some close ups when we're all done. I don't know how you're gonna get those. Cause I'm tall and I can reach them, but I can't film and do the sign out at the same time. You did a really good job uh, centering that since the windows kind of cattywampus. I had to do some math. It was a tough day. Okay, so here's the product rundown that we used. Sweetie Jane mixed with Pantry Door 50-50, no extra bond in that milk paint. Then we also used uh, the Fairy Chalk Mother in Best Black, the Rose Toile Stamp. Then we used an Essential Stencil. That's the only thing we don't carry. You can check that out on their website. Use code Jamie Ray Vintage to save 10%. Then we used the DIY White Swan with that. Yep. And I think that's it. Oh, we also used the brayer and the foam roller. Yeah, don't forget the rollers. The ro People asked how we liked the rollers while we were live, and we liked it quite a bit. It was much faster than the brushes. We still got some bleed through underneath, but that could be user error. Yeah, we just need to use them a little bit more, but they're definitely speeding up the process because I think you could whip out a bunch of signs, just roll it and go. Yep. So. Anyways, go to jamierayvintage.com to pick up all those products. Don't forget to check the live portion of this video out. The link is below if you want to see us painting or actually making the sign where we use the stencils and the stamps. Be sure to share this video with your friends. Oh, these boxwood wreaths on the side. <laughs> Watch out. Watch out. The boxwood wreaths on the side, they gotta go. They're old and faded and dried out. So we need to know, should we replace them with faux boxwoods or do you think we should take the lamb's ear wreath and just buy two more. And I need to know like today, cause they're on sale for Hobby Lobby for half off this week only. So I need to replace these before they go back to full price. So what do you think? Let us know, boxwood or lamb's ear? So the lamb's ear is what's behind on the sign that we made. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.